Dragcast, episode 182. We are talking to day two, my friend Simon Chong. He is from Bob's Burgers. He is amazing. And I cannot wait for you to hear this interview with me, Patricia and Simon Chong from Bob's Burgers, right here today on Dragcast. This episode was recorded on March 22nd, 2020. Hey, listeners, it's me, Andrew. And it's me, Patricia. And we are here with another episode of Dragcast. Guys, it is our very first episode of our interview series that we are now falling into right here on Dragcast, and we're excited to share with you. Uh, we've got a lot of great people and personalities and I think um, dream dreamers and um, imagination makers and uh, incredible artists and actors and creators all coming on the show to talk about what they do. And today's uh, we're kicking it off with a really big bang with uh, our guest. Yeah, we are going to be talking in a few minutes here uh, to Simon Chong. He's a he's a, a director on Bob's Burgers, the animated series. I'm calling this episode the Burger Cast. I am so excited. I'm such a fan of the show. So get ready to hear me fangirling all over the place. All over. All over the place. So our burger of the day is delicious. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> welcome to Dragcast Nina West and our special guest, Simon Chong. Hello and welcome to welcome back to Dragcast with Nina West and Patricia Taylor. Hi, Patricia. Hi, how's it going? <laughs> uh, really good. Uh, we're really excited because it's a big day here at Dragcast as we welcome uh, my friend and our very special guest today, Simon Chong. Simon, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm very well. Thank Simon you for having is... me. Oh, are you kidding me? Oh Thanks. Are you kidding? Thanks We're so me. excited. <laughs> <laughs> so Simon is a director on Fox's Emmy Award winning animated comedy, Bob's Burgers. And he's originally from a small town in North Wales, the United Kingdom. What's the town? San Beris. I'm sorry, what? San Beris. I know. San, <laughs> San Beris. Close like... enough. That'll do. That'll do. <laughs> Related to Lord Beris. Is that somebody? I don't even know. <laughs> Lord Paris, <laughs> wonderful. And he moved back. To, uh, he moved to Los Angeles in 2017 after living in London for over a decade, where he ran an animation studio working in advertising. And Simon really uh, broke through with his uh, animation crossover fan uh, artwork of Bob's Burgers online with none other than Archer, uh, and it caught the eye of producers and creators of Bob's Burgers. Uh, he was then headhunted to be an animator on their show, and since then has risen in the ranks to become a director and an amazing episode editor and incredible, incredible artist. Simon, welcome to Dragcast. Thank you. That was a great introduction. You've done your Thanks. research. <laughs> <laughs> so, we are ready. Okay, let's get, let's get the big first question out of the way. How are you doing right now amidst all of this chaos? So I'm fine. I'm absolutely fine. I'm at home. I have food. I've got TV. I've got video games. I've got a setup that I can work from from home. I'm absolutely fine. I mean, it's, it's, it's sad not being able to see my friends, of course, and self-isolating and all that, but I'm doing okay. You're doing okay. So my, my guess that, I mean, that leads to my very first question. What are you, like, what is keeping your attention? What's keeping you busy? Um, a lot of streaming TV, loads of things that I kept meaning to watch that I said I'd catch up on and didn't, like just this last weekend. Not the best show to watch during this sort of time, but I watched Chernobyl. <laughs> 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 everyone, was telling me, everyone was telling me I should watch it, and I did, and I watched the whole thing in one go. It was, it was really wonderful. Um, a lot of Parks and Rec community. I, I know I work on Bob's Burgers, but... Uh, before I worked on it, it was truly my, one of my favorite shows. I still watch it all the time. Before episodes that I worked on, because I don't know how they were made. I don't know the process behind that side. I still watch that show an awful lot. That's, that's great. Um, I, I will say I binge Bob's that's, quite often. I mean, that's something I watch quite often, which we're going to talk about really a lot. Definitely as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so, you're, so you're, you're self-isolating you mm -hmm. are, uh, you're binging, you're playing games. Uh, mm -hmm. Before that, you know, you are, uh, I actually had the privilege of coming out to LA and doing, uh, sitting in and watching a table read of an episode that you're uh, directing or will be yeah. directing. I am, yes, yes. <laughs> um, which was a really interesting process. So for our listeners who don't know, can you talk about the process of the, first of all, the whole, the whole process behind the creation of one episode of Bob's and the time it takes and really what that whole experience is like for you? Yeah, sure. So 
each of our episodes take about nine months to make from start to finish, um, which comes to a surprise to a lot of people. But when you consider that literally every single thing that's on the screen needs to be designed, um, drawn up, carefully placed within the world, that then sits around a story that's been written, nine months is about is as quick as we can do it. And we're making 22 episodes at the same time, but they're all staggered at different stages of production throughout a year. But it essentially just starts with a writer writing the episode. Um, a director will get the audio um, and we will draw up rough versions of the story to see how that's all progressing with our character designers, prop designers, background designers, and so on. Um, get that checked over by 100,000 people for notes. It gets drawn up into a slightly better version of the show we call an animatic, which is basically how the show kind of looks, but in black and white. Um, not as many frames as what you see on screen. Once all that's done and approved, it's shipped across to Korea where it's animated, a studio over there. That takes about five months. And then when it comes back, we do final changes and alterations and punch up jokes, change things. Sometimes we add songs before they air um, and get the show as good as it can be. Wow. That's like, uh, so you, do you get what part? So it sounds like you get the audio. Yeah. How, um, how much before that are you involved in that episode? Before the audio, I'm not involved in it at all before that. Um, I don't, the, our creator of the show, Lauren, he likes to direct the audio side of things um, and does a wonderful job with the cast that we have. And the writer sits in on that also and then directs it also. Um, and we, uh, but th that's all their side. That's all their side of it. I'm responsible for how it will end up looking on screen. So prior to getting the audio, I have no involvement in it. So when you, so when you, what is the biggest challenge once you get, so you get the audio and you have, you've read the script and you get the audio from there, your first move is what? Closing, watching it, oh, sorry, listening to the audio, <laughs> closing my yeah. eyes and visualizing it as best I possibly can. If it's in an environment that I know very well, like the, if it's in the restaurant, that's fine. The whole show is a language of how that sort of process sort of works and sets up like you've got the shot down the counter you've got the shot towards the pass through or um towards the door like we can reuse these shots over and over again they're already established but if it's a new location and i don't want to get into obviously the table read that you came to but there's quite right. a location that they go to at the beginning of the episode i have to then sit down and just draw so many versions of what this location may look like um mm -hmm. Then from there, again, just completely visualizing, scribbling out camera angles and I'm saying camera angles. It's, you know, where I imagine a camera to be within this world. And I'll right. ribble that whole thing out um, very, very loosely. And then a lot of other people on the team will make it look wonderful. So when, okay, so now let's back up because I got, I got, <laughs> I got, a, I got, a, little, I got a little ahead of ourselves. So you really, when did you, I, can you remember the first time you fell in love with drawing or with uh, with the art of illustration or animation and, and how that got you here? I want to hear that part of so, the story. So the second I could hold a pencil, this is what my mum has told me anyway, the second I could hold a pencil, I've been drawing. I never stopped. Like whenever I could, if I was in a restaurant and I'm like, you know, give me the, the kids menu things, I wouldn't color what was on the thing I would like draw on any space other than that and just constantly 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 draw and I would always draw the Simpsons that was like this is my favorite thing at the time so I would I would sit and I would draw the Simpsons over and over and over and I didn't know how to apply that as a kid to what I wanted to do as a career until and I remember it really clearly I saw Toy Story and I came out of the cinema seeing Toy Story I was 10 when, when I saw that and I just knew whatever I had just seen that's what I wanted to do with my life and from then on it's been like just working my way towards that goal of telling stories through drawing and animation oh my god wow. <laughs> so um so you you had a, an animation studio that was more geared towards advertising before mm -hmm. the leap to Bob's Burgers yes uh how'd you how'd you get how'd you get from I want to do that and I see Toy Story, I want to do that too. I'm actually doing that. Did you did you study animation? I did. I did. Okay, so this is a whole little story. So get ready. Ooh, I'm ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, I went to university and I studied, studied uh, computer animation there. Initially, it was 3D animation because um, I thought that's what I wanted to do. Um, and I studied there for three years. 
moved to London, ready, big like big dreams, like I'm going to be mm-hmm. an animator. And it turned out <laughs> that everything I'd been taught in university was wrong. All the software was correct. <laughs> no one used it. Um, and I was applying for jobs, and people were just turning me away, saying, "No, you can't." you can't do this, it's silly. <laughs> but, um, I was really defeated and was like, shit, I, I cannot now do the thing that I want to do. So um, I got a job, luckily, at a company that had their own animation software. They were the only people who, the people who worked there were the only people who knew how to use it. So no one else knew how to use it. So I, I got the job and I had to learn how to use this software. So started at this company in London, worked there for three years, and me and my then boss realized we were the only people that knew how to use this Software. <laughs> so we thought, what if we leave and start our own company? They'll have to come to us um, for work. We sounds like we screwed them over, but they were actually very supportive of the whole thing. So we did th- we did that, and that's how my company in the UK started. We um, we immediately had this client base, but also could like find our own. And whilst I was doing this company. I taught myself animation all over again in software that people knew how to use, like industry standard mm-hmm. stuff, using the internet and YouTube and uh, a website called lynda.com and uh, just taught myself from scratch how to animate. Um, the whole time I was working at this company, I was in my spare time just learning more and more and more about animation and how to animate more and more things. And something for me that I like is um, I learn by imitating. So yeah. I would... Um, I would copy uh, animation styles and figure out how they did it and reverse engineer it and figure out how they did stuff. So I uh, initially did a South Park animation where I took a song from the Book of Mormon, um, the first song of the Book of Mormon, and animated it to uh, uh, the style of South Park. So it's Hello, Meet South Park. I put that online. I don't want to toot my horn, but a lot of people can't tell that it's not from the South Park studios. And that really got me (laughs) this vibe of like, oh, I want to do crossover stuff and silly things and, and really put silly content out there. Um, so the next um, thing I sort of did was to try and do um, uh, chibi anime kind of style animation. So I did a song yeah. for uh, Adore Delano. Um, she has a song called Hello, I Love You, which is on her, her first album. And I animated a, song, a video to that for fun, uploaded that online. She saw it and used it on a background when she was doing a tour, uh, which was really wonderful. Um, and then I was like, well, what can I do next? What if I do a Bob's Burgers thing? It's my favorite show. And I love Archer, and I know that Archer and Bob are voiced by the same guy. So I spent seven months <laughs> in my spare time animating the silly thing where I just initially was just going to do the intro of Bob's Burgers in the style of Archer. Um, and I, collect, I collected seven seasons worth of audio from both shows and found dialogue that matched up so that it sounded like all the characters. Yeah, that was them. one of my questions. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, how, how, like, it it how took a very world... long time. That took the longest. Uh, I, the, there was a website that I was going through that had all the scripts listed as well. So I had to kind of like find a line that I thought would work, find that line in the episode, and hope there's no audio on top of it, like music, so that I could pull it and put it next to the other dialogue. Animated this whole thing and uploaded it in July 2017. Um, after seven months of work, I was so sick of it. I was just like, I need to get this thing done so I can actually go and do I know my real job. And um, I uploaded it. Then the day after I uploaded it, the creator of Bob's Burgers, Lauren, he tweeted me and just said, do you want a job? And I was like, what? No, that's crazy. Like, is that for real? And he just replied saying, yes, really, let's do this. Two months later, I sold all of my stuff in London, um, got a visa, moved out here, left my lease in my apartment, um, and started working at Bob's Burgers as a storyboard artist. And over the last two years, I've worked my way up pretty quickly, and now I'm directing. That's... And that's the story. I know, sorry, it's such a long story. No, it's yeah. not, but it's like, it's kind of that story of perseverance, right? I mean, like, you knew what you wanted to do, and you, in such a weird way of life, you found your way there, right? I, I mean, you... I, I went through such a non-traditional way of doing things. Um, my And uh, the, the, my, one of my proudest moments, I mean, there's many moments on, I've worked on the show that I was really, really touched that I got to work on. But um, one was uh, the, the, the premiere of The Simpsons, 30th season or maybe it's the second episode I think it's the second episode yes they have a crossover where Homer in the, in the, the couch gag is that Homer goes to Bob's Burgers and I got to storyboard that uh, with our supervising director so me drawing the Simpsons over and over and over and over as a kid suddenly I was drawing Homer for the Simpsons and that was like a moment where uh, I'll never forget where I was like oh god I'm actually doing this <laughs> <And draw it. laughs> the Simpsons. For the Simpsons. yeah it was a lovely moment did are you one who visualized this? I mean, do you, I mean, some people 
Like, you know, did you see this for yourself? Did you, had you never, 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 never thought I would ever leave London. I was so happy working at my company. Um, it was, I ran it with a bunch of my friends with a great time every day. And they're still doing, they're still doing, uh, they're still running the company and still having an absolute blast. I, I truly thought I'd be in London forever. I, I, I'd always, you know, imagined and hoped I would one day maybe work on a proper TV show, but I never thought it would actually ever happen. Um, and I'm so, so grateful that it has. That, I just, I am kind of, I'm floored by your drive and determination after, I mean, in the, even in the moment, like when you look at, so this crossover episode that was noted by Lauren Bouchard, which is the, um, this Archer Bob's crossover, right? This, that's, yeah. the, that's the one that took so long for you to create. That's what we're referring to. We'll put a link of it uh, up on our, um, our episode notes for a Simon's episode. But specifically, when you watch that, it is so tricky because I was, I was watching, I was like, it's almost like, <laughs> it's just, I mean, you were so, it's so seamlessly done. But then you had to like really pull together each and every different vocal and, and math that out. How, I mean, so you're, were you reading scripts? Were you listening to episodes? Were you, was it kind of just self full immersion in creating this whole? It was, piece? I, I know both shows incredibly well. Um, so I, I knew I knew some lines of dialogue that would already fit together in a story that I kind of knew would work. Um, and so I, I just kind of went from there, really. Um, I think I had about a minute's worth of dialogue that I knew would probably work. And then it was around that, just hunting for other dialogue to kind of pad that out. Um, it's so funny when I look back on it now, I can't believe how long I spent, <laughs> I spent <laughs> every night looking for audio for that. And like my housemate at the time, um, he was going insane with me constantly showing it to him going like, does this look like Bob's Burgers? Does this look like Bob's Burgers? <laughs> <laughs> like it, it, it was, it, I was I'm now, funnily enough, now I, I, when I watch it, because I know the show's intricacies so well and the details and all the subtleties that we do with characters and how they move and how they talk. I, when I watch this piece, the Archer Bob's crossover, I'm just like, oh, it's disgusting, it's hideous. But, <laughs> but I didn't know at the time, and it. But it our eye doesn't know that either, though. Our eye doesn't know that either, though. Good, you know? good. Because yeah. I don't work on it. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm just a fan of it, so I get to enjoy your, you know, your process. Yeah. That what you what makes you slave over it makes me just enjoy it. So. I love that it. you did this then, like as a labor of love, because it sounds like you didn't anticipate no. the show oh. would know. No, so no, 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 never, never, you were just never. About your, you were just creating things that you wanted to create, and you had yeah. this kind of success. I think that's that's such a lesson for people who don't know how to take the next step, but just keep working. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. A lot of people have asked, you know, like, how do I get into this? How do I do this stuff? And and the, the first thing I generally tell people is, don't ever make anything expecting people will see it and love it, because if you just go in with that expectation. You're kind of setting yourself up for a fail if it doesn't go mm -hmm. the way you want it to. How I approach any of my work um, is that I'm making it. If it makes me laugh, I'm happy. If I'm having fun doing it, then great. And then if other people do end up seeing it, even better. But first and foremost, I do all the things I make for me. Um, never did I anticipate I would have got a job out of that animation when I was making it. Never. It wasn't even, wasn't even like a thought in my mind the whole time. So that makes that leads me to like and an kind of another segue is like you mentioned um, a door and you and, but you've also talked about these other things that you really deeply love mm -hmm. you know like Drag Race uh, mm -hmm. like The Simpsons uh, when I came and visited your office you clearly have a love for some other things like Jurassic Park and, oh my god I love Jurassic Park <laughs> yeah I mean like there's like like I noticed like you're a pop culture fanatic so I am. Um, when you even go on your Instagram, you've done these really fun illustrated crossovers of of, you know, of a lot of different people in the world of Bob's Burgers. Yes. Like I've been lucky, I've been lucky enough to be one of those mm -hmm. subjects mm -hmm. with Team Accelerate from RuPaul's Drag Race that they did on season eleven. You've done Gaga, you've done other queens from Drag Race. You've, mm -hmm. I mean, you're you're it, it just goes across the board. Can you tell us and our listeners kind of what it is? That you love so much about these different fandoms and these things like you, know, you start wherever you want oh i don't you know i i i don't 
know the answer to that question. I just, it's just whatever I enjoy at the time. I, I don't go in, I don't have a list of mm. things where I'm like, I'm going to draw this next. I'm going to draw this next. I'm going to draw this next. Any of my drawings and my crossovers that I have on my, on my uh, page are literally because I probably either just watched something and thought, oh, that's fun. Maybe I'll draw that. Or like um, Derry Girls, for example. Like I binged mm-hmm. all of Derry Girls because I think it is absolutely fantastic, hilarious comedy. And then immediately afterwards, I was like, I'm going to draw Derry Girls in the style of Bob's Burgers. It's like whatever is in my head at the time um, that I just really am into at that moment, I just end up drawing it. I keep waiting for Bob's Burgers, like the higher ups, to just be like, Simon, you, you've got to stop doing this. You, th- these are not our property. <laughs> I'm drawing them. But no one stopped me yet. So I just keep kind of doing it. But there's, um, I don't know. I don't, I don't think there's a, 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 a real answer as to why I choose the things that I choose. It's just whatever I feel in that moment that I want to yeah. draw. So, you know, that leads me to, we did ask um, ahead of time for some questions from our listeners that that, uh, what they wanted to ask you. And um, that just ties nicely to uh, at Frackle Rock 21, (laughs) um, who I'm definitely going to be friends with. Uh, (laughs) She wanted, he or she wanted to know, they wanted to know what's a crazy mashup that you would love to draw in the Bob's Burger styles. Maybe something you haven't done yet that, that uh, maybe is out there on the horizon. You know, I, you literally just said this now, Andrew, but uh, you said Jurassic Park, and I was like, why have I not drawn Jurassic Park? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that would be unexpected. That would be so good. It would be uh, so yeah, good. I, I, I think um, I haven't done a proper... Like, I, I'm really into Marvel stuff, and I haven't really done a big um, Avengers or type thing, uh, or anything like that, but um, I'm going to say Jurassic Park because I'm annoyed at myself now that I've not thought to do Jurassic Park until this moment. Now we're going to see a Jurassic Park on your Instagram. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready That's for my it. Afternoon. <laughs> I mean, yeah. When it comes out, I'm going to I'm going to chuckle a little inside. I feel like I have insider tip. I know, right? <laughs> oh, how long? So, like, let's say for example, uh, like, how long does it take to do uh, like one of those drawings for you? You know, so if you take the drawing that you did of me and Tina with yeah. the back, how long did that take you? couple of hours um it just uh it, it's just the case of um honestly the outfits take longer figuring out how i'm gonna convert an outfit into both burger style because like faces and stuff like that i know how that side of it works but um like your the, the, the rainbow outfit that i drew in that picture for example was trying to like simplify it in a way that it works within the bob's burgers universe um that's often harder for me to figure out but usually it takes me a couple of hours to draw these things so do you see? So do you see when you look at the world? Do you see somebody's face like you're you're in a grocery store, <laughs> oh, and do you just see their face as yeah. a Bob Burgers character, some, like like some with people, the eyes? And the... Some people just look like Bob Burgers characters. It's, <laughs> it's, it's really odd. Like it, it's off, It's more often if someone doesn't have a very pronounced chin, for example. I'm immediately looking at them and I'm like, you're a Bob's Burgers character. And I can just see it. Some people's faces I can just look at and just, yeah, I can see it as a Bob's thing. So you talk to me. Now, one of the things that I love, and this is how we met, is because of your love of Drag Race. Yes. And, and, it's, been, it's, and it's been around for a long time that you're, you've loved the show. Yes. What is it about the show and um, how has that influenced, I think, your work on the show Bob's Burgers? Well, so for years, I actually did not like Drag Race. I was a, when I was younger, I went to a drag show and I had just the worst experience at this drag show. Um, and the queen, the queen was mean. The queen yeah. was nothing but mean. Vulgar, yeah. low-hanging fruit joke. And I just, in my head, assumed that's what all drag was. So Drag Race came around and I was like, no, I'm not going to watch that. I'm not going to watch that. And, um, but I was dating a guy in London and he forced me to sit down and watch uh, the first episode of season six of Drag Race. The best and, season. The best season. I, oh, God. And I immediately fell in love with it like, within the first five minutes. And I was so mad at myself for letting that one bad experience I'd had of seeing a drag queen sour the whole thing for me. Like, I did not at all appreciate the creativity that goes into it or the work. It's just art. And... It's everything that I love. And um, yeah, immediately, immediately was a huge fan. Um, and yeah, <laughs> and now, obviously, I'm just an absolute, uh, I, I adore drag. I think it's absolutely wonderful. Um, 
And the very first episode that I worked on on Bob's Burgers uh, when I moved over was the Christmas episode from two years ago called The Bleakening, which is an hour long episode where I love that episode. Yes, with, and... Mary, with, with Mary Triple Xmas. Is that what her name was? Yeah, uh, she's called Triple Xmas. Okay. Uh, the rest of the year, she's known as Cleavage to Beaver, but voiced by <laughs> voiced by Todrick Hall. And, uh, you know, that whole bit would be being like this uh, wonderful uh, drag queen sequence. I was just like, oh, my God, this is like an episode that was tailored for me. And here I am working on it. So that was that, that, that was absolutely wonderful. And I like that Bob's in general just has these characters, uh, you know, in, in the show. We have like Marshmallow, uh, Marbles. We have queer characters and representation. And it's uh, it's wonderful. You know, that leads me to another listener question. Uh, our friend Christian wanted to know, and you may, I don't know if you're going to know this since you're kind of late, uh, you've, you've come to the show more recently, but he, he asked, there are a lot of subtle, subtle queer elements and moments of representation in the show. Mm -hmm. Was the LGBTQIA representation always going to be part of the show, or did you think that came about organically? I think it was it, uh, Lauren Bouchard, is the most wonderful, who's the creator of Bob's Burgers, is one wow. of the, he is absolutely a wonderful man. And I would like to believe that the world of Bob's Burgers is the world that he would love to be in. Um, I think it was probably a mixture of both yeah. of those things. Um, but I, I love that uh, the world of Bob's has the representation in a way where nobody, um, nobody is... Uh, like Gene, for example, a lot of people wonder whether he's going to end up being gay or bi. And um, we'll probably oh, get really? to that answer on the show because Gene is, uh, he's a 11 year old boy. Um, but I mean, of course, some people know when they're that age, whether they're gay or bi or not. But um, it, just the fact that he's allowed to exist within that, spa within that space and no one ever puts him down or questions him is just wonderful. Um, and I love that about the show so much. Actually, there's a, um, what, this isn't going to go out for a couple of weeks, is it? Right, yeah. So tonight's episode that airs, one of the characters is going to, one of the, not the main family, but a secondary character is going to be revealed as lesbian. So um, just like a really wonderful lesbian storyline will be part of the show tonight. Oh my mm, God. Gonna yeah. Everyone's going to know about us. So, well, okay, well, that, well, that makes that leads me to like really want to know do you like have a the way it works if you read a script do you because you direct how many episodes would you say a, a, a season? i'm doing five this season you're doing five for this season which would for our listeners will air in 2020 uh start, 20, start in in fall 20 yeah fall 2020 into yeah. 2021 yeah so the year from now so you're doing five episodes so the episode i saw at the table read a month ago it doesn't air until the beginning of the end of February 2021 You're or beginning of March. That will probably be no, that'll probably be before Christmas. Oh, really? I think that one will be before Christmas. Really? It's I such think. a good episode. <laughs> do you? Do you? It's oh, like wait, no, 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 you're right. That one, sorry, no, that one will be next year. That one will be next year. But it, yeah, it'll be good. This is a very painful situation where he knows what's going to happen next year on Bob's Burgers, and I do not. And I, <laughs> do you, <laughs> do you I, like, that's the thing, like, is there a character that you love to draw when you get your script and you're like, oh my gosh, uh, there's this great moment with Linda, or, or Louise is doing this, or Tina, or do you have this, do, is, there, is, is there a character you're like, I get to do this with this character, and I'm so excited. Linda. Linda every time I Linda, Linda is yeah she's my absolute favorite character everything that she gets to do is just always so fun and so wonderful um on the flip side of that I also really love drawing Tammy because Tammy is such a bitch <laughs> any story any storyline that involves her I just I, I love I love drawing her as well because you can just be as sassy as you want um yeah either either Linda or Tammy but probably Linda that's <laughs> that is, I I am such a big fan of Tammy. Just you know that girl. When you see that, oh, you know that girl. You know her. <laughs> so, you know, so you know, her so no, so wait. So okay, so okay, for all of us fans and who are listening, which is your what is your favorite moment or your favorite episode that you've had the chance to put your hands on? Other than this Christmas episode that was your first. What was this? That was my first. Uh, my fa so the, my. The proudest moment that I've had, I think, 
is uh, there's an episode at the end of season eight um and it is where it's called something old something new something bob caters for you and bob goes and caters a wedding um for this couple and it all goes wrong um like the, 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 it's a very windy day things blow all over the place <laughs> and everything just goes terribly wrong for this poor couple and bob takes it on himself as feeling like the his food is going to save the whole day and then he sings this song um called um this wedding is my war zone and um, <laughs> it is it, it, the song was added in after the episode had been animated it came back from korea and we um wanted to punch it up by just adding a song in there because we felt like it really needed to something extra yeah so uh, and i got to storyboard that song so uh, and the song is so cute and wonderful and it's just bob having you know this internal struggle with himself and linda trying to calm him down and it's just a really beautiful song um that's, that's definitely like one of my highlights I was going to ask, that was one of my questions, is like when you have one of those moments in the credits where the song, you know, all of a sudden we have our, we have our like resolution and then there's a song at the end yeah. with someone like with a ridiculous character that you meet at the beginning yeah. <laughs> or it shows back up again or the running joke. Yeah. And just, when does that, are those songs always planned or does that really happen as organically as you say, it came back from Korea and you're like, we really need to add a song. And who writes yeah, the song? It's, no, it's, and, completely, it's completely organic. So um, the end credit sequences are all done in-house. Uh, we have animators in-house who do those. And that literally is like, we'll sit down, we'll watch the episode and be like, what can we do for the credits? And they'll be like, well, what if we have this, this song? And what if this character does this? And it is, it is honestly, is so organic. Um, it's, it's just, it just uh, keeps it because sometimes when we things come back and they get rewritten we don't know how things are going to change so and maybe that one change that it does when it comes back for example like that song in that episode i was just talking about the credit sequence was that song yeah, again yeah. which didn't exist before you got before shit. Sent it off. Yeah. yeah yeah but it is completely organic the whole show is very much like that it's always always being rewritten to make it as good as it can be when, so that, I mean, so that kind of leads to the next portion of it. Is there, how do you stay? Because the demands, I would imagine, are pretty intense. How do you stay connected and focused and driven on the work that you're doing? I mean, it's sometimes a simple, I mean, sometimes for me, I'm just like, I pull myself out of it. I'm like, I just can't believe I get to do this. And that's exactly. enough for me to recharge and jump back in. What is it for it's you? That, exactly the same. It's that. It's that. Like every day I walk into my office, I walk past pictures on the wall of Bob and the family. And then I sit at my desk in my office and I'm just like, holy, holy crap, I, I'm drawing these, these characters. Like, I've been here for two and a half years now and I'm still not even remotely over any of it. Like, it, 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 it's, it's, my passion for this is crazy and I, I love it. Like, I'm just sitting and I'm looking around my apartment right now and I can just see like 9,000 Bob's Burgers things in my house. <laughs> like... I just I ad I adore the, this line of work. It's it's what I've always wanted to do, and I'm just so proud that I get to. So that's what keeps me going. Is, is there anything? So like this is your day to day. Is there anything when you started there, uh, since the show had been around a little while, that you were like, "Wow, I had no idea this is how they would do it," or anything that really surprised you getting there as a as a fan of the show? The the re the constant rewriting. Honestly, um, I, I I had no idea. This is the only show I've ever worked on TV show wise, so I don't know how yeah. other TV shows mm -hmm. do it. But I guess I just assumed like, you know, the table read happens and that script remains unchanged until the second it airs. But I I didn't know how much rewriting gets done um, on the fly. That surprised me a lot. But it you really th through through seeing this, I really see how much. All the writers and everyone on the whole show really cares about making it as good as we can make it. You know, like it's not just like, oh, that'll do. It's never that'll do. It's always, well, we'll just rewrite that. We'll make that better. We'll mm -hmm. punch it up. We'll change that story point. And, and it, that that surprised me in in a in a really good way. Yeah, I think what you know when I I think what I was struck by by being so Simon gave me uh, Simon invited me to a table read, and I was able to. Uh, kind of see the world where everything was created and uh, a bento box, right? That's what it's called. Bento, bento box. box. Yeah. Or the, or, or, or the, it's the team behind Bob's, right? And so I was able to walk around and kind of 
It's like you're you're even like every you're just fully immersed. Now, you know that you walk into the area where it's kind of like it's like a commissary esque area, right? And it's, mm-hmm. there was food out for the table read, and yep. um, there's all of the awards that, around in this space that Bob is Bob's Burgers has kind of collected and. And, one, and uh, uh, it's just amazing different kinds of fan art it looked like from around the world or re- different kinds of merch and products that really I, I mean like just yeah. you're fully immersed and then you go back into your into kind of like the kitchen area that is made to look like the diner yes <laughs> I know <laughs> like, I love that a lot of people see photos of that and think it's an actual real restaurant that we go yeah eat at, but it's not it's just our kitchen <laughs> It's, I mean, like, so you're fully immersed in this world. There's a wall of what skateboards that are, are all like kind of done in the in the, the art of Bob's. Is there? Does it ever get like? Does does like Little Simon ever come out and just get giddy? <laughs> I mean, like that you just like all the time, all the time, and not just like it, I I find myself uh, like like you saying I can't believe I get to do this. Um, I find myself questioning that. Like even at this very second, right? Like this very second, right now, I am on a podcast with a Nino West and having, and I'm like, <laughs> what am I doing? How did I find myself in this situation? You know, like it's it's so it's so crazy, and it's not just on Bob's because I I have gotten to work on the other shows that are being produced. Um, in, in, yeah, in studio. I have so many questions about those. Um, yeah, one of them I know I can't talk about. Obviously, we have the movie also, um, and then but the other show which has been announced recently is Central Park, and uh, I get I, I will have a credit I think on four episodes of that show. But like just the fact that I'm getting to touch other shows with within the building is like <laughs> why why am I allowed to do this? I'm just like some because guy you're who, talented. But it's 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 it it blows me away. It really does, and I never. I mean, I hope I, I cross my fingers dearly. I, I I hope that I never become complacent um, where I am because I think I'll then start turning in shoddy work or like I will half at it like this feeling that I have I use that to push myself forward so much I don't want to ever be jaded by this whole thing and I don't think I ever will hopefully so when you so as you talk about your your Central Park is a new, is a new uh, show being produced yeah. right by Bento and uh, yeah. there is a Bob's movie coming up uh, there yeah. is I mean there's the the world seems to be expanding ever so mm-hmm. do you um do you have a like I mean you probably can't talk much about the last two things that I mentioned but um how do you I guess prioritize the passion so my first and foremost is the Bob's TV show that's like Bob's TV show is that's I'm a director on that my focus is on that entirely um if I'm working on the other shows it's generally um evening work weekends um but something that I I'm incredibly uh, lucky to have inside myself is that drawing is my favorite thing to do in the whole world so when I'm doing evening work or weekend work it doesn't it doesn't feel like work I'm, I'm sure it's the same with you when you're when you're performing you doesn't feel Mm -hmm. like work it's 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 like it's just so much fun and we're so privileged that we get to do something that makes us so happy inside and i think it fulfills or completes you i mean for me that's what it is too i think it's like wow this is like you know i think because when i mean for me it's i found the thing that i and it's just the performing for me and it's i found the thing that kind of fulfills what i've always wanted to do i knew i wanted to do this Mm -hmm. And then in some really weird, strange way, I got here. And mm-hmm. that's I'm pretty blessed to do that. Um, I, the big question I have is for listeners who are listening, a lot of like uh, queer art students, queer illustrators, queer uh, animators mm-hmm. uh, who want to get into the business, how would you tell them to do it? There are so many ways in, there really are. I mean, there's of course, there's a traditional way of studying, going to university, applying for jobs and so on and so on. Um, My story, my way in obviously is very different, um, but it worked. Um, My thing that I would say to most people, when I get, when I review a lot of portfolios, um, I get beautiful, beautiful drawings, but I'll look through um, a, a book of things and it's all kind of the same style um, I think it's always really wonderful to showcase a, a wide range of styles which, which comes back to me earlier saying something that I find um, the way, the best way that I learn is by imitating so I go through and do South Park I do uh, chibi anime stuff I do Bob's Burgers mm. style things like um, mm. I'm always trying to push myself to be as um, 
the word? Uh, what's the word where you try where you can do? I guess it's uh, be as versatile as you can, you know, be, go through yeah. and be and, and and show that you're able to do many different things. Um, if you put that in a portfolio and showcase that, that will work. But also, the way I did it work: do silly things, put it online. Don't do it with the expectation of getting a job, but just do it to get yourself out there and put stuff online. That's important, Patricia. Yeah, I think <laughs> I think that is really helpful. Is there anything else that you want? Nina Watts fans or listeners of Dragcast or the world in general uh, to know about you and your art? Um, it's, a, it's a broad question. Oh, it is a broad question. I'm a, and I'm a broad broad, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just in, uh, I don't know, my, well, my Instagram, if you want to go on my Instagram, it's chunkster62, C-H-O-N-G-S-T-E-R-6-2. Um, I've got a lot of my artwork and stuff on there. Um, if you want to have a look at, it's all very silly, but very, very, very Bob's Burgers centric. So if you like so that good. kind of thing, it is check a that out. Um, but honestly, just watch, watch Bob's Burgers. It is, it is a, it is a show that I promise you will enjoy with all of your heart. Now I have to say this. I was so I got to. This is like the big for me. It was such a weird moment because you don't know when you're meeting somebody from like say a show like Bob's Burgers and I remember being at the Creative Arts Emmys at the Governor's Ball yes. and you were there and um with a whole group of incredible people from Bob's uh -huh. and you and you came up to me like oh my god Nina West I'm like I don't like <laughs> you you're like we're from Bob's Burgers and I literally almost it was like I felt like I was meeting <laughs> like the Pope. I I like literally had this really <laughs> weird I had this really weird reaction and I couldn't stop smiling oh. and you were so sweet to me and you said do you want, do you want to go meet Lauren and I was like what <laughs> I was like it didn't <laughs> compute at all I like it could not process what was happening to me and then you, <laughs> exactly. you, bring Lauren, exactly. you go grab Lauren Bouchard you're like hey this is Lauren and I was like I and I'm stammering <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like this is I mean like again it's there's I have gotten so much joy and la like literal laugh out loud laughter from, from this family and this world and this uh, creativity and this, I think this machine that has been produced really by Lauren and the people that he loves and, tr and trusts to kind of hold on to that, which is someone like you, Simon. And mm -hmm. so when I met you and I, and, and like and you said, oh, I'm from Bob's Burgers, it literally was like this. I don't like it's when you meet for when you meet a Disney animator and you're like you're or a, a voice actor you're like you're the person it's when it's kind of when voice actors were voice actors before they were celebrities right mm -hmm. um like and not like nothing to knock a celebrity who's doing a voiceover but like before I knew who Mel Blanc was I knew the voice of a carrot like a Bugs Bunny right uh -huh. or um so when before so before I knew Simon I knew of the work that you had done. So it's like, whoa, this it was mind blowing. So I <laughs> that I felt and I want to say this about that experience is like them carrying over and you and that Bob's burgers family being so warm and welcoming at that table read and just being like, oh my God, hi, you're here. So great to see. Come have fun with us. And then you reintroducing me to Lauren, I was just like, was overwhelming and what was so cool was when you looked in Lauren's office it was like all musical instruments everywhere like everywhere. clearly the man doesn't stop creating no so I, I guess how he keeps that in his head he is a phenomenal phenomenal man so I guess my next question is when is Nina going to be on Bob's Burgers <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so funny because the amount of people put two and two together of you being at the table read they're like oh, Nina's on Bob's Burgers Nina's going to be on Bob's Burgers I know it was, it was just a table read it was just a, it table, was just read. a table read but oh. I would Listen, I'm available. You let Lauren know. I will. I have. I have let Lauren know. My no, no, but that does really lead to this question, this really serious question. And I, I know the answer. But I want to know, and I know my answers, my, my listeners, Patricia's listeners want to know, have you ever put yourself in a scene? Have you ever put yourself someplace? Yes. So you're like, huh, you illustrated yourself or animated yourself and thrown yourself in the world. Where yes. is it? Okay, so I, um, our character designers um, are wonderful, wonderful people. And uh, 
a lot of people who work on the show are already in the show. You'd never, ever know because obviously you don't know what they look like, but a lot of the background characters are people who work on the show. So my first episode that I've directed, which is the premiere of the next season, I was mm -hmm. like, I'm going to put myself in here. I'm going to do it. So um, at one restaurant scene, I'm eating a burger in the background <laughs> of the premiere episode of next season. You're eating a burger. <laughs> I'm just eating a little burger. I've drawn myself know, in there. Do you know what kind of burger you're eating? Whatever the burger of the day would be. <laughs> I don't know what that is yet, but it would definitely be the burger of the day. So I'm having that moment that Andrew had with you at the at the where I'm just so excited to meet the person mm -hmm. who makes what I love, and oh. it's so nice. Like I just love hearing that you are all in the scene. So now I'm going to be looking. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to be looking in the behind the scenes at the extras and try to figure out who they might be. I, I, Will I have success? <laughs> you, yeah. I, I, there's not many extras in the scene that I'm in, so you'll definitely, definitely spot me. Is there? <laughs> that just it's, it's, I, mean, it's, I have so it's just I want to keep going, but I know your time is valuable. Oh, and good, I'm fine. But but I just like you know, is there a moment when you just <laughs> when does I would say, hey, wait a minute, this looks like Simon sitting at the table. <laughs> like, this, like, you're just, you know, it's like, oh, oh, or like, is it like a quiet nudge? Like, oh, I so see you put yourself on the episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, no one said that because I've been incredibly vocal about it. I'd be like, I'm so like, <laughs> right, right, that's me. I put myself in there. There I am. <laughs> so no one, no one has said anything yet because they already know and they're fine with it. So you put yourself. So are there any other crazy hidden Easter eggs that we would be surprised to find if we were, if as a fan, we'd go back and watch? Oh, okay. And... So th there is, there is one, and it was my very, very first shot on the show. And I don't know why I didn't bring this up earlier. Um, the very first shot I ever worked on on the show is in yeah the Christmas episode, the Bleakening, um, and uh, but uh, Linda transforms into her Christmas dress at the beginning of the show by grabbing her bed sheet, spinning it around <laughs> herself, and it blooms like a flower. And that was inspired by the two-in-one look challenge from Drag Race. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, so that was like, I was like watching all the two-in-one looks, and I was like, how can I make this sheet work? And that's how I did that. And then one other one is if you watch the musical premiere episode for season nine, which is just one of the boys for now, for now, there's a shot with one of uh, Tina's songs where... Um, it's uh, she's singing a, a guy singing with a song about a guy who doesn't like her very much, and um, they're on a plane, and the this camera angle goes from an office block into the sky into a plane, and it goes yeah. through a little spy hole into the seating area on the plane, which was a reference to Toxic Britney Spears. <laughs> Wow. There were two things that I bought in there. I was like, I want references to these things. So I did get a drag race from Trey. Drag That's amazing. Yeah. Right in the show. I can't tell you how many times Andrew and I have watched that particular Christmas, you know, on YouTube where she does this thing with the sheet. Oh my God. Yeah, there you go. That's a, that's a drag race two in one reference. That I, is amazing. I have this never vast up. desire to do Linda in drag. Like I just want to, like after even after meeting John Roberts, I just want to do Linda so do definitely. You <laughs> should do it. It would be so good. Um, does that? So before we go, there's a couple things I want to ask. Yeah. I know I have a favorite Bob's episode. Um, mine is uh, when uh, Tina has an imaginary horse named Jerry. Oh, <laughs> and I love she's, that. Uh, I. But she takes the horse to the to the show, and she and she even like she's even doing the the galloping, and she falls off the horse. She goes, oh. <laughs> it's just so funny, and it's so good. Patricia, do you have a favorite episode? I have I have many favorite episodes. Um, I love I think I love all the holiday episodes, particularly Thanksgiving. Yeah, it's the best. But I also really love the early episode where Tina. Um, does the friend fiction oh, and she reads erotic like stories one. about her classmates. Um, so that's like way back in season one. But um, just like, you know, and my probably my favorite, uh, like um, Louise is the character I relate to most, but she's not, she's not necessarily my favorite character, but she's the one I see myself in. Yeah. And uh, one of my favorite moments is the one where she asks Marshmallow about her name. Oh. And, <laughs> And uh, Marshmallow 
why are you called marshmallow? And she says, whenever I see a sweet potato pie, I'm on top of it. Yeah. And we just, like, we just like, yep, that's what I thought. And uh, so that's a moment that I love. But um, I just, I'm such a fan of the show because it's so smart and it's so, so beautiful smart. and creative and fun. Um, Thank you. I adore yeah. it also. I'm, I'm biased. I know that I work on it now, but I was a gigantic fan of it before. before so, as well. does, so does that mean, do you have a favorite episode? Are you able oh, to pick absolutely. something that just makes you feel so great when you watch it? Yes. It's uh, an episode in season four. It's called Muzzle Tina. And it's when um, <laughs> when <laughs> Tina goes to Tammy's Bar Mitzvah. And it is just, I think, <laughs> the perfect showcase of both of their characters. Tammy being this monstrous bitch and Tina <laughs> just like trying her hardest to, to be cool and oh it's just such a wonderful combination of everyone's personalities shining so so wonderfully um i love that one so much I, well i love you so much and i'm just thrilled that Thank you took you. i love you guys so much we're thrilled that you're here. Now, we close every episode with a good vibe, something that uh, you, makes you feel good, especially right now during this time of uh, kind of quarantine and kind of uncertainty. These can be more important. So, um, you know, is it, what's getting you through right now? What's your good vibe that you can give to our So, list? something that um, Disney, or a lot, of, a lot of films are doing right now is releasing their films early uh, at home because of the coronavirus, of course, and um, Onward has just come out. Now, I know that you were at the premiere of Onward. I saw it <laughs> two weeks ago, and um, I don't think it is Pixar's uh, best film that they've made, but the emotional final act of that film touched me in a way that no film has ever, ever made me feel, um, and it made me feel truly, truly wonderful. Um, I, I grew up, um, uh, my, my parents divorced when I was very young, I grew up without a father, um, and the, so the film was already kind of like speaking to me in that sense, because these kids mm -hmm. grew up without their father, and something that happens in the final act of that film made me realise something that I had done growing up that I didn't even realise that I had done to myself, uh, and it was, I don't think, it, I can't think of another film that's made me realise something about myself like that, um, so... It, I left the cinema feeling amazing and I didn't expect that from that film whatsoever. So go in not expecting the best Pixar film, but an emotional ride. And I, I felt wonderful after. I would absolutely agree with that, actually. We will, and you will have to watch on That is ready to watch it now. I would 100% agree with you on that. You are... Um, Simon, you're brilliant. Um, Simon, hit hit your socials up. Tell uh, tell everyone your socials one more time for all our listeners so they can follow you and find you. It's all Chongster62, C-H-O-N-G-S-T-E-R-6-2 on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, Simon, uh, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thank yeah, you thanks for me. being here. Thank you. It's so lovely. I adore you, and I cannot wait to see you very soon. Hopefully another table read, some coffee, and some hanging out. I Disneyland, when it you. opens again. Disneyland, we're going. <laughs> we're going. Simon, thank you so much. Have thank an incredible, you. incredible day. Thank, thank you. you so much. Bye. 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 Thank you so much for listening to Dragcast episode 182 with our special guest Simon Chong of Bob's Burgers. We can't wait to share more fun with you. Our next episode will be featuring the Star Wars intergalactic star Daisy Ridley. We can't wait for you to hear it. Follow us on our social medias at Dragcast on both Instagram and Twitter. And you can find our podcast playing wherever fine podcasts can be heard. Stitcher, Spotify, and of course, ninawest.com backslash Dragcast.